We're so glad that you've joined us for Family Chapel in this season. Now, for every family chapel, you really need to be sure you have three things. The first thing you need is a candle. Maybe it's a candle that needs to be lit with a match. Maybe it's an electric candle. That doesn't matter. But it needs to be a candle so that when we light the candles here, you can light yours wherever you are and join us in celebrating the light of Christ. The other thing we need you to have is your singing voice because there will be singing and we want you to be singing right along with us. And the last thing we need you to bring, which is just as important, we need you to bring an open heart so that you are ready to hear God's word, so that you are ready to pray and that you bring all of what you love and care about into our worship together. Again, we're so glad you're here to share this season with us. We begin with our gathering prayer and repeat after me. Dear God, we have gathered to worship you. We have come to thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. As we light the candles, we give thanks for the great light of the world, your Son, Jesus. May our lives be a light to others. Amen. This is a time for you to push pause and light the candles that you have at home. And remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. God of new beginnings, in the waters of baptism we receive your Holy Spirit and become one with Jesus. Help us to live as children of God, filled with your heavenly love, so that all the people and creatures of earth may live happily as one family. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee one day. There he found a man named Philip and said to him, follow me, let's go. Philip was from Andrew and Peter's hometown. Then Philip found Nathanael and said, we have found the Messiah, the one Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus and he's from Nazareth. Nathanael said, Nazareth, you're kidding. I can't believe anything good can be from Nazareth. Philip said, well, come with me and we'll find out. 
when Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, now there's a good man, that Israelite walking my way. Nathanael said, how did you know me? Jesus said, I saw you standing under the fig tree before Philip came and got you. Nathanael was so impressed by this, he said, wow, you must be the God's son. You are the king of Israel. The gospel of the Lord. Well, now that we're uh, done with the Christmas season, we come to a new season in the life of the church. It's called epiphany, which is sort of a fancy word, but it really means seeing something that you hadn't seen before. And particularly, it means how we come to see who Jesus is and the difference that that can make for us. So we got a bunch of stories about people who come to see Jesus. It's really, um, it's really a fun season to think about these stories and how you might act if you actually saw Jesus in person. One of those people is a guy, um, we don't really know what he looked like, but this is what we're gonna say he looked like. One of those guys was a guy named Philip, I wonder if you know anybody named Philip, but Philip was one of Jesus' disciples, and he met Jesus. What does he need? He needs feet, okay? Birkenstocks or something, okay? Boom, there we go. Philip met Jesus, and he was so, oh my gosh, he was so excited to meet Jesus. He said, this is really great. This is the person we've been waiting for. And he went and he just told like everybody he ever met because he was so excited about this. And one of those people was a guy um, who had premature balding. Let's see. A guy named Nathaniel. And we read in the scripture that Philip, this was Nathaniel, was a friend of his. And um, Nathaniel was, this is an interesting little detail, was sitting under a fig tree. You ever seen a fig tree? They're awesome. Figs are really delicious. Anyway, he was sitting on a fig tree. That's kind of important because it says a fig tree in the Bible means he was maybe praying or studying or thinking about where God was. And Philip comes to him and says, I got the best news. We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for the Messiah. We've been waiting for Jesus. And guess what? I just met him is Jesus of Nazareth. And um, Nathaniel goes, you're kidding me. Not Nazareth. Nazareth is like this dinky little no count town. Nothing good can come from Nazareth. Like if you told me he was from Jerusalem or New York or London and Paris, I'd go, okay. But the Messiah is not going to come from a little dinky town like Nazareth. Nothing good comes from a place like Nazareth. Hmm. Philip said, well, let's just go and see. Let's try it out. So the next day, this is day one. This is day two. Next day, Jesus now, I have to say, we don't know. We didn't have cameras in Jesus' time. We don't know what he looked like. And I'm pretty sure he didn't look like that. But we're giving our best shot. Jesus was walking around Galilee, which is uh, where he lived. And he was beginning to teach people and stuff. And he, was, uh, he went to Galilee and Philip and Nathaniel went to see him, right? And we have, let's see if we can draw Nathan, uh, Nathaniel again. Nathaniel come walking down the road and Jesus sees him and he says, hey, I know you. I saw you. You're the one who uh, Philip was talking about. I saw you under that fig tree. This is the first time Nathaniel had ever met Jesus. And he goes, how on earth? Did you know who I am? Jesus says, I'm telling you. I saw you under that fig tree. I know who you are. And I think you're a good guy. And I think even though you asked how anything good can come from Nazareth, I think that showed you were taking this really seriously. And you know what Nathaniel said? Two exclamation points. Wow. He said, you are the Messiah. You are the one we've been waiting for. 
And uh, Nathaniel became one of the people who followed Jesus, who came and, and went with him and stayed with him and studied with him and learned from him and shared his good news. So a couple of things about this story. One is that thing about Nazareth. Like we should never, ever think that some place is too small or too tiny or too out of the loop for God to work. God can work through anybody, through old people, young people, through rich people, through poor people, through people who live in fancy houses, through people who live on the street. There's no limits to who God, how God can work. And the other thing is we could all be a little bit like this guy, Philip. Because if we have had some sense of Jesus in our life, if we have some sense of God's love for us, we can share that with other people. We can share that with the ways we talk and the words we say. We can also share it with the things we do, the ways we care for each other. So we're going to hear a lot of stories in the next couple of weeks about epiphanies, about people who come to see Jesus. Remember this one? Remember uh, Nathaniel who says, wow and think about how you can come to see Jesus in your own life. Amen. Now let's say our creed together. Repeat after me. I believe in God's love. I believe in God's love. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe in Jesus' love. And the Holy Spirit too. Tells me what I ought to do. So now it's time to bring all our prayers to God. Let us pray. God, thank you for the whole wide world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Thank you for our families and the people we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the city we live in and the church we go to. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please keep our world and our families safe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please take care of the people who are sick or scared or sad. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please stay with us as we grow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For what else should we pray? This would be just the right time to press pause as you're watching this and pray for those things that you really want, those things that you really need, those things that you really hope for. And now, lifting up all our prayers, glorious God, who spoke light into the world, we thank you for sending Jesus, your Son, as a light for all people. Help us to find the light within ourselves and one another, so that we might rise like the sun and shine your love in all places. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now we can't hug one another or even shake hands, but you can stop this recording right now and you can do all those things at home to share the peace with everyone you love.
our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord.